I just, I brought it up again, the color, and she said, just go, go get labs. Let's do labs, you're here anyway. They were gonna call us back. She said it should be no big deal. Maybe you need iron supplements, no big deal. And we didn't even make it 40 miles down the road, 30 miles down the road, and we had a phone call. We'll need you back as soon as we can get you in because uh, they used a lot of terminology. And all I, I can just remember certain words flashing out, you know, one, the urgency of needing us in because, you know, it took months to get into them and now they're wanting me there tomorrow. So I knew that was weird. They mentioned you will have an appointment on the 10th floor and the 10th floor at OU Children's Hospital is the Jimmy Everest Cancer Center. When we went in the room after that, they immediately had a child life specialist there and asked the girls to go with her to go play. And I can remember that's when panic hit because I had already put it together. They're taking them away so they won't see how we react. So I knew it was bad. Whatever they were going to tell us, it had to be bad enough that they don't want Grace to remember that or Anna to. They left the room, shut the door, and the next words were, we think Grace has leukemia. And I can remember thinking, well, that's what you think, but you don't know that yet. And, you know, I think they've just seen enough parents in denial that they just know to sit back and let you process. She left the room. We didn't really discuss much more than your child has cancer. And then she stepped out, and I just remember. I mean, that's when you just kind of, the walls crumble. You just, that's why they take the girls out of the room. Um, and we both broke down. It's pretty devastating to, to, you know, it feels like your whole world is, is crumbling in on you. You know, I went through cancer with my mom, you know, and so, you know, to have your child have that, it's, it's uh, pretty heartbreaking. Because uh, like I said, I, you know, I can fix a lot of things at work and around the house, but, you know, that's one thing. I don't know how to fix and you know I think that's what eats on me probably the hardest is to watch my family have to go through through this and not be able to, to correct it or, or fix it or do anything about it is just you know the hardest part your hands are tight behind your back and so. And they brought the girls back walked us down the hall immediately got Grace into a hospital bed began poking her to get her IV in I mean, the process was just so fast. I mean, one minute, you do, you're just like any other parent. You're not the parent of a child with cancer. And in one minute, we, we were just welcomed into this new world. And, you know, because she was so dehydrated, they poked on her, I think a total of 14 hours. On the day Grace was diagnosed, they um, had to take her down to get, I think it was x-rays. I, I held her in the wheelchair, she was sleeping and I had my head down and I was just crying, crying to anyone who would listen, the nurses, I mean, it was just, I was falling apart and Grace opened her eyes, she was sleeping, she opened her eyes and she said, mommy, I'm scared. And I remember then just praying, God help me find a switch because I have to turn this off because if she sees I'm scared, she's gonna be scared. And um, it was after that, I like to say God gave me that switch. Um, I mean, I break down in front of her at times, but when we're in front of Grace, we are brave, we are strong. Um, you know, we do our daily affirmations and um, I'm able to put that face on because she needs that. Um, and I think that's, that's the load that parents of children with cancer carry is you have to be brave even when you're not. When your child's going through chemotherapy and ha they have a suppressed immune system, you, ha you have to isolate yourself and your child. And unfortunately, that's a time when you need people the most. 
So it's a, I mean, it was very lonely. It was very scary. Um, you know, you could easily feel forgotten. And um, so you're dealing with all of the emotions and fear already. Um, but I think that's where living where we live has been so unique because the communities, not just Beaver, I mean, it goes through the Panhandle, Southwest Kansas, the way they have all come around us and just cheered us on, even though they couldn't come in our home because I would lice all them down and <laughs> probably not let them in. Um, you know, there's just been so many things done for us that you feel connected still. You don't feel, you know, out here by yourself you know, fighting this war that no one can see. By the time we got diagnosed, I mean, by that evening, you know, they'd already set up a, a page or, you they know. They created a Facebook page. page. They had made t-shirts. They uh, had already planned all these fundraisers and um, they had prayer groups meeting. Uh, and that's before I had even spoke with anyone. You know, a simple text message, you know, because you can't be on the phone and tell them while you're with Grace and, you know, that's all they needed. And they stepped up and they just took care of us. I don't, it's overwhelming the amount of love and kindness that is, that's out there. Um, I had one of the moms when Grace was diagnosed told me, you're gonna see a kind of love and kindness. You will only see it from the 10th floor. And the 10th floor is cancer floor. And I don't think it really meant much when she said it to me. But now I look and for as awful as things are, um, what you have to go through, what you have to watch your child go through. Um, we have seen more love, more kindness. Um, Grace has touched so many people. And not that I'm happy we had to experience what we've gone through, but it's been amazing to see what one little girl can do. We kept thinking of the amount of trips that we're going to have to make up here. Uh, you know, where are we going to stay? What are we going to do? Uh, you she know. was going to chemo every seven days at some point during this treatment. And so we were trying to figure out what we were going to do. Uh, you know, when we came into Oklahoma City to that appointment, you know, we seen this this place that looked kind of like it. You know, had all these kids jungle gyms and stuff like that, and we thought, oh, that'd be a neat place to take the the girls after we get done with this hospital appointment, you know, to kind of maybe let them have some little fun or whatever. But, you know, that was actually the Toby Keith, uh, OK Kids Corral, and the Toby Keith Foundation. And uh, they'd mentioned that was a place that we could go stay at, you know, while we were doing treatments. So, you know, my brother and sister-in-law flew in from, from California. And, and uh, of course, Kirsten and, and Grace were still in the hospital. And so, you know, I was the one that had to go over and see this building for the first time, you know, so we went over it, you know, we asked for a tour and they took us on inside and like I said, it was amazing. You know, it was a wonderful place, you know, for, for us to stay and other families with, with chemo. The burden, not only to pay for treatment, but to pay to get to treatment. I mean, there are times, Grace, we were going every week, then when she would have hospital stays for fevers, we would be there for multiple days. And I cannot, I, I don't know how we would have done it without the Kids Corral. I mean, you would have made it happen, but the Kids Corral took a huge burden off of us. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, the hotel piece scared us as well, you know, with the germs and the things that she could have caught there versus the Toby Keith places. All those people are on call station, so they all know. They're just as worried as we are about you know, everything. The cleanliness and, and everything that needs to happen. And, I mean, it's just, you know, you've entered, like I said, you've entered a different world that you never knew existed. I think it was the day of diagnosis. Um, she, Grace was very upset. Um, to be poked for 14 hours is very traumatic for a little girl. Um, and as soon as Targa got on that bed and just laid down with her, the entire energy in the room changed. Um, it calm. calmed us, it calmed Grace. And I feel like from that moment on, anytime Targa came, as parents, we it was like a relief, like, oh, Targa's here, we can, <laughs> we can relax now. Because 
the, the effect she had on Grace, it was just so calming. And Grace says Targum would make her brave. They came in with Targum. I was hugging her, loving her, and petting her. And that made me feel so better. We had had conversations early on that we knew the power that a dog has with Grace and the way it has helped her, and we knew right away when Grace was able, um, you know, she had restrictions until maintenance phase, she couldn't have a dog, but when she could, we wanted her to have her Target on, and she had begged for a Target on. We needed a golden retriever like Targa, but with Rick's allergies, we needed something hypoallergenic, so we, uh, we, we found Bowie, and uh, that family would send videos to Grace throughout treatment, checking in on Grace. Grace would love to send Bowie videos, and um, that was we started a countdown: how many chemos till Bowie? Um, that was a big deal. You know, it wasn't how many chemos till I'm better. It's how many chemos till I get that puppy. She was. Just, that was our light at the end of the tunnel. Can you see my puppy here? Here. Yeah. Can you see her white patch? Grace, I mean, was very aware of, she had met her chemo limit, it was time for that dog, so it was just a matter of when. Um, and, you know, trying to keep a secret from her is impossible, because she is, she's on it. So um, we had told her, we've got to take a family picture, and then we'll go see Dr. Jones and get Bowie, the veterinarian. So she just couldn't wait for you to get done taking pictures of us so she could get that dog. Um, so she really had no idea, and uh, I just, her face, I, w I watched that video over and over, her eyes when she realizes Bowie is there. What is that? Bella. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That her own? Hey, Bowie. <laughs> oh my! Yeah. Oh my gosh, do you love it? It's easy when we go to appointments. You can see that next family, but they're waiting to get diagnosed. You you, you can kind of tell just by watching their gestures and and see what's going on in the hospital. But they're in that waiting room, and they're they were us, you know, a few months ago. They're the next person's walking through our journey and so, so how can we help them and how can we make it easier for them to, to get through this horrible thing. But, but like I said, God has a plan and, and uh, you know, we're going to get through it. Grace is going to get through it and, and something bigger in life is going to happen. I mean, I think as a community, and you know, they've already started that for us from day one and so we just got to continue what they've started and, and keep helping others. One thing I've learned through this journey that I hope I can teach other people um, if they're going through something similar. When you have something tragic happen, like your child being diagnosed with cancer, it's easy to feel like God's punishing you. What did you do wrong? Um, and I could think of a lot of things I did wrong, so there's a lot of guilt. But if we give it to God, good can come from it. And that was a big, it, just a shift, you know, in my mindset of instead of, I mean, don't get me wrong, I get angry and I get mad because it's not fair. But when I could turn it into saying, God, use it for good, and I can see all the good coming from this, then cancer doesn't win. And watching my baby suffer is not in vain because all of the good that is coming, because, because we've been vulnerable, we've, we've shared the story of what we've gone through. Grace has touched so many lives with, I mean, she's just the kindest, sweetest soul. And if good can come out of it, I just think, you know, it's not in vain. And um, I guess that's the biggest thing is learning, you know, you can have terrible things happen in life. It's not punishment. Give it to God and let Him use it for good, because He will.